Go ahead, Brittany. Well, I want to say, like, I ultimately, there's so much nuance to be had, and the individual experience is so complicated. But for every person that's going to wrongly die, it's going to be a person that should have. And then the cycle is just going to continue. Ultimately, like, we're going to cause suffering, whether we intend to or not. And so the idea is just harm reduction. It's not like eradicating suffering. That's not how it works. And so I think we all have the best intentions here, but the road to hell is paved in those. So just be careful with that. Um, with that said, thank you for having me. It's almost 4 a.m. here. You. I gotta pleasure. Go. <laughs> thank you. Always a Take pleasure. Care. Yeah, you thank are. you for, for coming. Bye, son. Brittany, bye. That was great. They were so nice. I just want to say it again for you guys. The road to hell is paved in good intentions. And so many people have so many good intentions. And so many people are going to suffer because of that. And so you want to know why I don't prescribe my ideas to 8 billion people. I don't make prescriptions as much as possible. It's because I don't want to be any of those people on the panel that did that and didn't take into consideration other people's lived experience. I don't want to make the mistake of saying that Britney's way is the only way. And it's so funny how I exist on the internet where people are always like, Britney's so black and white. She only wants people to do it her way. When, like, we just went on a panel where everyone was just saying my way was the right way. The best way is to give people choice. I believe in people's ability to choose. They can choose toxic relationships. They can choose healthy ones. They're not always making the most cognizant decision, which is why, again, you want to know if it's healthy, happy, and kind. If you're not in a healthy, happy, kind state, you're always going to be influenced by that, like, negative energy around you, right? And we can't always be perfect, so sometimes we're going to make toxic decisions. I was reading my journal earlier today during the time when I was in therapy, and I was just, you know, oh, my gosh, guys, every two pages, every two days was literally, like, we got in a fight again. I wanted to die. I hate my job. I hate my life. Every, like, every oh, – some pages were, like, oh, great day today. Still want to die. Like, there, it was such a depressing – journal and as I'm reading it I'm I cannot tell you I have been like four years basically in the clear of having these thoughts and being this way and thinking you know and so much of it is like the relationship I'm having with my consciousness and I just don't think people are having that you will die and that's all there is to it there is no way around that you can't play games and cope and pretend you're not going to your family members are going to die. This planet is going to die. The universe might die. Everything around us will die. I hear God's already dead, so I guess even he dies. Everyone is going to die. You're just a blip in history. You're one more dead person no one's going to remember. You only have this one time on earth. And I think you should live how you want. And I think you should die how you want. And I hope you live with dignity. And I hope you die with dignity. And I wish the world would stop trying to force their love down our throats. Because it's very frustrating. I think one of the best tools my therapist ever gave me was the choice that I could. She was like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally you could. But what if you didn't? This fear of like, oh, no, don't. You could live. Live for what? What is this life that you're offering that is better than the sweet release of an internal nap? Eternal nap 100% of the time. And at the same time, I don't see myself unaliving myself right now. Why? Because I don't have to. It's not a need. But if it ever became one, I would really like the f***ing option without forcing my family members into an awkward situation of having to f*** their 89-year-old grandma who has Alzheimer's. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like they're not even considering the fact that you might come from a culture that isn't afraid of death and is okay with caring for our sick and elderly by giving them a dignified way of leaving the earth. Just so funny. And I think if you don't experience it, I get it. I totally get it. If you really don't have a positive relationship with death, of course it's going to be scary. Of course they're going to think it's cope. You don't have to cope with anything more than you need to cope with it in the moment. Death is not something you need to cope with. It's just something most people do cope with because they don't understand it. Man, I'm so lucky I grew up in the bubble I grew up in. Like death is just a, it's a, it's a participation thing. Everyone comes around. Death is just a part. It's sad. Yeah, dude, I get it. But like, it's a part of literal life. 
like I am really lucky and this isn't guaranteed, but I do I think if I had to make a bet that if God forbid, God forbid, one of the children died, God forbid, or even somebody in my inner circle died, it would be 100% devastating. But I think we've so prepared each other as a family up until this point where we know it could happen. We have to. We have to do it because we're just – we live a full life and so we take risks, right? The kids live on a farm. Accidents happen. They live on a pond, like a farm with a pond. Things happen. So you do your best. You teach your kids the, the, the tools to survive. But things happen. And I think it's best to prepare yourself for the reality that you could be that statistic. You could be that story. And then accept that it will be sad. Accept that it will be devastating. Accept that it will be very hard. It's allowed to be hard and it still doesn't have to be a cope. You can face death and have it be hard and still not have it be a cope. This is what introspection is. Introspection is having a relationship with your consciousness that allows you to understand your place in the universe and in your micro bubble. It allows you to have a relationship with the living and the dead. It allows you to ask yourself, depending on how far you go down that path of introspection, of what to do when you're faced with the reality of life itself. The actual reality of it. Not this like YouTube drama, Twitter war, like that's that's life too, but that's like a different part of life. The part of life that people are afraid of when they talk about death is the part of the introspection, introspection journey that people don't get to because it's too scary. And that's why I say like, you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But if you find yourself listening to the panel and thinking like, hey, so-and-so is kind of like stopping themselves from seeing a different perspective, apply that to your life and think, okay, in which way am I thinking about so something else in life the way so-and-so is thinking about death? Do I want to think about any part of my life with such a fear and such a energy? Or do I want to have a really intimate relationship with it so it's not the thing that is holding me back from living the most joyful life I can have? And then the journey is yours. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to live. You don't have to die. You don't have to do anything. You can just sit in your room and piss yourself all f***ing day. But you have options. And that's all that matters. You don't have to take them, but you do have them. I'm going to bed now. Well, I'm going to go eat, and then I'm going to bed. Thank you for watching. I'm going to do more panels in the future, I'm sure. This was really interesting. And also, at the same time, I just, yeah, I'm... You know what? Okay, one last thought. <laughs> the fact that some people live in bubbles where they never deal with is insane to me the fact that some people live in bubbles where it's not just like everyday conversation but like you tried to kill yourself last week how'd it go because the reality is like you're not going to stop your friend who's suicidal. you can lock them up and put them in a facility but that's not going to stop them from wanting to die like the idea that some people live in a reality where people don't self-harm around them like couldn't be me man i really just come from such an emo ass bubble I come from such a self-harm, like, kill yourself is just casual conversation bubble. These people who want you to live so hard are always the same people who, like, they never see you right. They never see you the way you need to be seen to even get past the idea of wanting to die. In order to want to live, you can't tell a suicide person i mean you could tell some suicidal people but you can't tell someone like me like it could get better girl please it could get better of course it could get better i could win a billion dollars tomorrow and it could get better that's not gonna fix the fix the relationship i'm having with my consciousness that's not gonna fix the relationship i'm having with my inter like my inner soul this epidemic of loneliness has nothing to do with tinder or your like shopping apps or your dating apps or whatever the people call it it has to do with the relationship you're having with your consciousness. It gets better. No, you get better. And you only get better when you face your fears. And your fears often include death. When you face a fear, you end the cope. If you still cope, you haven't faced the fear. 
And if you think everyone is coping around you, look in a mirror. Okay, love you. Bye. Peace, love, and Jesus Christ. Ugh, I'm going. I love you. Bye. In my head, in me like bonded. My belly's being fed, and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool.